How in the world did I ever get involved with PFAS as a class of chemicals? Uh, it began, as most of these stories you'll hear, I'm sure today, involve something to do with Arlene Bloom coming to my life about five, oh, it was about 2011. And I learned a new acronym, PFAS, Befloral Alkyl Substances. I have been working on all sorts of personal care products, all sorts of fast food wrappers, all sorts of clothing and textiles and carpets, uh, things that come in contact with babies, things that come in contact with specific segments of the population, and this chemical is everywhere. These, these chemicals are used ubiquitously. My students started measuring uh, fast food wrappers. They discovered we could find fluorine in anything, let's test everything. And they found fast food wrappers had some fluorinated compounds on them. And it made some sense. Fast food wrappers generally wrap greasy foods or hot foods, and you don't want the grease to go through them. So we found that some of the wrappers were treated with a fluorinated chemical, which we assumed to be PFAS. So we began a scientific study with the cooperation of not one, not just green science policy, but with four different environmental groups from across the country I had gone out and collected wrappers and sent them to us. And we ran one summer 450 or more samples of fast food wrappers and measured what fraction of them had PFAS on them. All the major brands uh, of, of fast food were serving uh, perfluorinated wrappers on some of their products. And this was remarkable and nobody had seen that before. And we had a chance to publish that. We had 300 news stories in the next two weeks. We have over 16,000 downloads of that article to date. It's remarkable how viral it went. Everybody was interested in something that hit very close to home. It was their food that they ate and it was being treated with a chemical that they had no knowledge of. And what happened after that was a, in this roller coaster of, a, of event was that uh, three US senators wrote a letter to the 20 CEOs of those companies saying, we understand from the Washington Post this morning that you're using perfluorinated alkyl substances, per and polyfluorinated alkyl substances in your products. Uh, what's your company policy for removing these chemicals from your products and how soon will you do it? And to their credit, they all in the next year started getting out of the perfluorinated wrapper as far as we can tell. And so this is an example of where a scientific publication without a lawsuit and without until last a uh, couple months ago, a change in law managed to affect an industry. And it was not the largest industry. It certainly wasn't the major, major sales of fluorinated chemicals in this country, but it was a subset that can be changed by market forces. And that means an entire refocus in my life as to what the primary mission of my research focus had been up to that point. And that had a big influence on me. That these chemicals last a very long time. They're gonna get in the drinking water and you and your children are gonna drink them. Um, and that means that if we can reduce the use of these, we're gonna cut off future concerns for uh, generations to come. And that plays a role. That means that I, my research is being used in an applied way to actually do good. And I like that feeling. <laughs>